In this video, we're gonna talk about Ocellus, Sony's new camera tracker. You're watching VP Land. Special thanks to our sponsors, Blackmagic, View, and Lucidlink for helping make our NAB coverage possible. And now, back to the video. So Simon, we've got the new Ocellus camera tracker. Can you kind of walk me through what we got going on here? Okay, so we have some key components to the, to the system. We obviously have the, the sensor housing mm -hmm. here, which is doing the main tracking. And then we have the processor box on the back of the camera. And we have the external lens encoders as well. We include three external lens encoders for the system. Okay. What's important about this system is that it uses visual SLAM technology mm -hmm. and it's using, it has five sensors on the sensor housing. So there's at any one time, four out of the five are active. Okay. But we have great coverage depending on the environment that you're mapping. How many can, do you need four cameras to have a clear line of sight at one point? Or no, and that, the, but the benefit is that you don't need you can have occlusion, uh -huh. uh, and, but you only need one sensor working when you're actually doing tracking. Okay. Uh, you, so you, you can cover multiple sensors and still get good tracking performance. Right, as long as one has as a line of sight. As long as you use, you use all, all of them for uh, when you're doing the initial mapping of the location, mm -hmm. but you only need a minimum of one. Obviously, more is better, uh, mm -hmm. but you can work with one, only one sensor. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned, so what is the calibration process like? Uh, it's very quick and efficient. Uh -huh. uh, basically, you, you can extend this, you take off the camera, you can extend it from the, from the camera up to 15 meters, and you're basically just wanding the, the environment, capturing data points, which is getting stored on the system. Okay. And then and so that, it's looking around the environment yeah, and building yeah, like a point. Yeah, yeah. We have, I know we have a shot up there. Exactly, so you can see it on what there. it's seen. Exactly. And then that, that's stored as the map, and then when you go shift to do tracking, it's going to use it as a reference. And so if you are on a stage or a location, you calibrate it once, mm -hmm. then when you like come back the next day, reboot, does it already have a map? Or do you have well, to we have the map. I mean, if there's, if there's been a significant changes, you uh -huh. may need to go and recalibrate. But you can also use this not only indoors, but ex exterior environments as well, because there's mm. no markers required. So you can actually use it outside. And we see a good application in more augmented reality to do that um, for outside broadcasts and stuff like that. So mm, to track a, the cameras, there's, there's, there's a potential we can see for that as well. Okay, for like broadcast use, you're yes. tracking the camera yeah, space. Exactly. For, yeah. For so not, not just in, in LED volumes or green screen compositing, but for augmented reality. And what about? I know there's some other features too with uh, strobe lights or like uh, how the camera's working adjust if you're in like a... Yes, if you're in a, if you're in a low light environment yeah. or, a, or a fluctuating lighting environment, so it can ha also handle that. We do have a, a visible light filter that can go on it, on top of it as well. So you can actually use the IR, because it has IR LEDs as well. So mm -hmm. you can use IR as well for detection. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then as far as uh, release timing... Uh, release timing, we're looking at the fall this year, so October-ish. We're, we're thinking it would be the release date for okay. this, October, and November. Do you know anything about pricing or how it's going to come? Uh, we're looking at a list of thirty-five thousand okay. for the uh, for the for the sensor unit, the, the processor, and the three and lens encoders. Uh, there are other benefits when you're using it with like Sony cameras. It is mm. camera agnostic okay. because it has all the different interfaces on the processor. Mm. But if you use it with a Sony camera, whether it's an HTC studio camera or a cinema line camera, we get the BSDI data for all the camera settings, including if you're using a smart lens, you can mm. actually get that all through the camera system and just through SDI input into here. Okay, Everything and then you wouldn't need the, the lens signal. encoders because yeah. you were getting it from. Exactly. They, okay. Exactly. Any other advantages if, you, if it's integrating directly with uh, a Sony cameras? Uh, you, know, you, you get clip naming, you get time code, you get so everything is, is referenced together. Okay. Uh, it, has, it has 3D support for, a, for live VFX. If you want to do a, a live link plugin for, for Unreal, you can use the, the 3D output of Ethernet. And it records an FBX file for post production. Well. Okay. With the pricing, you know, if there, is there often going to be a subscription or like There's no on? licensing use. So okay, yeah. so like you buy it, you own it, done, you could yeah. use it. Okay. Yeah. Great to hear. Yeah, well, no, thanks for the update. I cool. appreciate it. You're very welcome. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. And thanks again to our sponsors for helping make our NAB coverage possible. For all of our videos on NAB, check out our playlist right here. And I'll catch you in the next episode.